Okay, hello everyone. Thanks so much for, for being interested in governing your co-ops in the best possible way. That's really what makes the difference in these types of organizations. My name is Erin Hancock and I'm happy to uh, contribute to this uh, program that NASA is undertaking right now. So I want to talk today for a few minutes about director duties because we have folks who join co-ops and join co-op boards for lots of really good reasons. Sometimes it's for the experience, Sometimes it's for the opportunity to work with other great people. Sometimes it's because they want to contribute. And sometimes it's because they, uh, they have a pet project that they really want to pursue. But at the end of the day, we all have duties that we need to carry out as directors and, and take those responsibilities seriously too. So let's talk for a few minutes about knowing your role and meeting expectations for serving on a board of directors. So we're going to talk about fiduciary duties. Maybe this is a word that you're already familiar with. But basically what we're talking about is legal and ethical responsibilities of any director that serves on the co-op board or a charity board or any other type of governing structure. And these are often regulated by your state or your province or at the federal level. And so basically we're looking at people who serve on boards as acting as any prudent person would. So if we were to remove you from the board and insert any other prudent person, would they still act in the same way that you're acting? Would they still be as uh, taking that kind of responsibility that you're taking, being as informed as you are, and taking decisions in a very similar way? So that's sort of the prudent person test. When we're talking about legal responsibilities of directors, that's really critical. And another thing that some people don't realize when they serve on boards of directors is that they are personally liable for the decisions that the board takes and the actions that the board takes. And so this is something that we're not always aware of when we join a board because maybe we're volunteers or we want to make a contribution or someone begged us to join the board because there's a vacancy. It's really something to consider because if you are acting as that prudent person and you're informing yourself and you're doing the best possible job that you can do, then it's not so much an issue um, you shouldn't be worried about liability issues. But if for some reason you just joined a board, you haven't informed yourself, you're, you're not showing up to meetings, and you're making decisions based on things that are not in the best interest of the organization, then you can be personally and legally responsible for those actions or inactions. So there are three key duties that a lot of people talk about when we think about legal and ethical responsibilities of directors. The duty of care, the duty of loyalty, and the duty of obedience. So let's break that down. Okay, so the first one is the duty of care. And this one is it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, to most people. Basically, when you offer to serve on a board of directors, or you are elected to serve on a board of directors, the critical thing is that you show up to the plate for this role. So that means that you're present, so you make sure that you're showing up at meetings, that you're prepared, um, and so you're ready to engage when you arrive at those meetings. So it means that you're fully present and aware of what's going on, you've informed yourself, you're ready to communicate. If for some reason you can't show up to the plate in one of your director duties, or to a meeting, or to a committee meeting, or to something that you've committed to, then you make sure to be in communication. This is what allows boards of directors to really work well, and for other people to step up when you have to step back. So what does it mean to be prepared? This is informing yourself. So it's knowing the history of the organization, knowing the history of the issue that you're discussing on any given day. It means that you've done your research ahead of time. So that's internal and external research. So that means knowing the organization inside and out, but also knowing the context in the community, the context in the market, the context of the people that you're trying to serve best. And then also bringing alternatives. So part of being prepared is looking at, okay, is this the best decision that we can make with the information and resources that we have right now, or should we consider other things as well? And I wanted to mention insurance here because, again, a lot of people step up to the plate and, uh, to serve on a board of directors, and they aren't entirely sure of the liability issues. And there is such a thing called director and officer liability insurance, and lots of organizations have this so that directors feel secure that if for some reason they do get sued at some point, that they are covered as long as they've acted as a prudent person. Okay, so the duty of loyalty. 
This is all about being a steward of the organization and being a champion of the organization too. So making sure to know and believe in the mission of the organization that you're serving and the cooperative in this case, and also making sure to be someone who's out there in the community really talking it up and who really cares about the success of the organization. And this one is really interesting, especially when we're talking about apex organizations. Acting in the best interest of the organization that you are serving on the board of at that time, at that table. So it's not your constituency. So in cooperatives, a lot of times, people will get elected based on uh, coming from a certain neighborhood or a certain area or a certain demographic. And that's excellent that we have this kind of really uh, planned diversity on our board. But what we want to do is make sure that when we are at the board table, we're not representing our constituency when it comes to voting or decision making, but we are actually looking at the best interests of the organization as a whole. Now, this is the difference between dialogue and decision, meaning that when we're in dialogue talking about issues, and because we have been brought there representing a constituency, we absolutely can bring those voices forward, bring those ideas forward. That's perfect. When it comes to making the decision, we really need to look at the overall best interests of the organization. That's hard for a lot of people to distinguish, so it's worth talking about as a board. This is another good one because often we can have really excellent debate and dialogue around our board table, and that's a really good sign of a healthy board, that people aren't you know, into this mentality of groupthink, one strong person puts an idea forward and everyone votes in favor. But instead, we have this really good debate and dialogue. And what that may mean is that you may not come to consensus as a board when that meeting is over. There may still be a few dissenting voices in the room. But the duty of loyalty says that when we walk out of that boardroom, we all support whatever the decision was publicly. And so when we're talking to members of the co-op or other people in the community, we are all one voice as a board after that decision has been made, even if you personally did not agree with it at the time. And the third piece under duty of loyalty that we really need to think about is conflict of interest. And this is something that uh, can be messy sometimes in boardrooms, and we want to be upfront about it right from the beginning what the expectations are with our board members. So if there is a conflict of interest, meaning that someone could personally gain from a decision made in the cooperative, we want to make sure there's a culture where we declare it right away and we decide how we want to proceed. So do we want that person to remove themselves from the discussion, from the decision making? Um, how do we want to handle that? So that's something that every board needs to decide how they want to handle it. But you definitely don't want this happening under the surface without it being declared. Okay, and the third duty, the duty of obedience. So first is the overall umbrella for this whole duty is looking at compliance and integrity of the work that you do as a cooperative organization. So you want to make sure that any of the regulatory frameworks within which you operate, both your internal, so meaning your bylaws and your policies, and also the external, meaning the, all the legal um, the laws and policies that apply to you, that these are being, uh, that you're operating within those with integrity. And this is a big job because if you are a co-op that employs people, you need to know all the regulations that apply. So if for some reason your management is not uh, abiding by all of these, that you're aware of it as a board and you can really handle that in a timely manner. If, if you're a charity, um, also, your tax regulation, if you own buildings, all of these things have legal frameworks and you need to be informed so that you can make sure that you're in good standing with all of these laws. Okay, so those are your duties. Uh, hopefully this is helpful in uh, how you want to uh, move forward with your discussions as a board and feeling informed and prepared as a director. And so I just wanted to say that in terms of making sure that these are always top of mind and you have a high level of performance within your board, 
consider your board training to have these kinds of discussions. Make sure that when someone new joins the board, they're given all the information so they can be prepared. And also, you might want to have a meeting with them when they first join as well, so they can discuss this. You might consider, as a full board, doing an annual review of your, your bylaws, your policies, your mission, so that all of these things stay top of mind so people can really carry out these duties and feel strong and confident about them and informed. And also, you might consider having a code of ethics as a board so that you can uh, annually review together what the expectations are for all of the directors. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, and good luck, and keep doing great work in your co-ops.